Podcast. Presented by XFL2K.com. With your host, Tron Hawkins. Welcome to This is the XFL Podcast. I'm your host, Tron Hawkins. Um, so earlier today, well, now yesterday, I guess, but I put out a poll about three topics. One was Mr. Man, the boss. Um, one was about the 2001 XFL playoffs, uh, since we just got through the Super Bowl and stuff. I figured that'd be a good thing. Or number three was Oliver Luck. And out of all the votes, 50% went to a Oliver Luck episode. And I'm, and I'm glad it did. That kind of shows where he's at right now in the XFL fans' eyes. He might be, and probably will go down, as <clears throat> the most beloved figure in this league. Probably more than Vince. Probably more than any player. People just love hearing him talk, and he is the face of the XFL. I think this is where Vince is succeeding this time around than last time around. He's finally got a football guy in charge. This ain't just Vince McMahon going out there going, this is the XFL, and putting everybody, you know, all by Jim Ross, J.D. King Lawyer, Jonathan Coates, and all those on commentary and stuff, just saying, all right, talk about football. This is a football mind. This guy's been football all of his life, and now he is the CEO of a startup league, which is not the first time he's done this because he did it with NFL Europe. This man's the face of the of the league, and not only that, he is the he's who everybody talks to. You know, they're not talking to Mr. Man. They're not talking to you know any wrestling guys. I mean, I'm not mean that in a bad way, but he is a football guy, and he's who's the one on the ground floor. He's the one in the battlefield. Doing the work, doing the interviews, interviewing coaches, and that's and that's who he is right now. I mean, look at his first hire as coach, Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops hiring is the biggest thing that happened to the XFL so far. I talked about that in the last episode. That's because Oliver Luck. That because Bob Stoops respects Oliver Luck, and there is no telling. I mean, Bob Stoops gonna be the biggest coach uh, that we get that the XFL gets. But I don't mean that Oliver Luck can't bring in more football guys, more respected coaches to be the other seven coaches. People are going to want to play for somebody like that. People are going to want to coach somebody like that. I think the Oliver Luck hiring is the most important in the history of this league. And I think it's the, I think he is the most, is just perfect. I can listen to him talk for hours. I know a lot of y'all can too. Um, so he actually started playing football. Uh, in high school in Cleveland. He was a quarterback. He then enrolled at West Virginia, playing quarterback from 1978 to 1981. In his freshman season, Luck only had 151 passing yards and five interceptions. I say that he's football mind, but if you actually look at his playing career, he was always kind of like a backup. He wasn't like a great player. But he does have a mind for football. He he knows what he's doing when it comes to, you know, being the commissioner and CEO of the XFL. In his junior season in 1980, Luck earned first-team academic All-American honors. So he's smart. He's, he's got a smart mind. Uh, at the time, um, Luck's 19th pass touchdown was a score record, which kind of shows you where football was in the 80s. He also added, uh, only had 1,874 passing yards. As a senior, he led Mountain News to the Peace Bowl, where they defeated the Party Gators 26-6. Also named ac- academic All-American for the second consecutive year. He knows... I mean, look, obviously he's smart. His son's smart, went to Stanford, uh, you know, Andrew Luck. Um, so not only is he a good football player, he, he breeds them. He breeds football minds. Like, I wouldn't, if, you know, if he keeps it up, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if something happened to XFL or, you know, if, if it went under, if he didn't get a job with an NFL team, like a GM or even the commissioner of the league because Roger Goodell is awful. Like, our, our XFL, and I say our because I'm a member of the XFL community. Our commissioner is better than the NFL community, than the NFL commissioner. I think Oliver Luck talks to us fans like we're fans. Like, he don't just talk down to us. I feel like Roger Goodell talks down to us fans. Well, Oliver Luck goes, look, I'm excited. I know you're excited. Let's be excited together. Let's, let's build this together. And that's, I think that's, you know, XFL is supposed to be for the fans. Oliver Luck makes me feel like that. He makes me feel like it is for me. That he's on our side. He wants what's best for us. He wants to put on good football, not for himself like Adele does. 
Like, Goodell's probably the only person that enjoyed the Rams Patriots Super Bowl. Let's be honest. You had LA market and New England market. He thought the only person that enjoyed it. All the luck, though, he wants what's best for us, the football fans. Luck threw for school record 216 completions on 394 attempts to add to his 2,448 yards and 16 touchdowns that year. He also had a career high of 360 yards passing and 34 completions and a loss to Syracuse that season. Luck was a three year starter in his career with uh, with school records of 43 passing touchdowns, 466 completions, and 911 pass attempts. His 5,065 passing yards is currently ranks fourth all time on the school list. Luck still ranks top 10 in nearly every passing category. 80s football was a different time. It wasn't all just. It wasn't just. Def- like, it was defense back in the 80s. Like, it wasn't just 100,000 passing yards. You know, it was just, hey, run the ball, or hey, pass it just when needed. You know, if he played. If he played now. He'd be just like his son. Like, his son's a gunslinger. That's kind of where they're different. Uh, they're both good football minds. And they're both very talented. Luck has that. Andrew's got that gunslinger mentality. Um, and I'm sure his dad probably had it too, but they just didn't let him uh, unleash it in the 80s. As graduating from West Virginia, Luck's QB job was filled by Penn State transfer Jeff Hosteller, who's a future pro bowler and future Super Bowl winner. So that's kind of crazy. Luck was uh, the 44th overall selection in 1982 uh, NFL draft. Uh, 44th overall, uh, taken in the second round by Houston Oilers. He was the third quarterback taken after Art Schuler, fourth to Baltimore, and Jim McMahon, fifth to Chicago. As a rookie in the start short 1982 season, Luck saw no action. In the second season, the Oilers inserted him as a starting quarterback, which he threw eight touchdowns, 13 picks, completing 124 of 217 yards passing for 1375. The Oilers went two and four. He also was teammate of fellow quarterback Archie Manning during the 1982-83 season. That's ironic because... Andrew Luck, his son, replaced Peyton Manning in Indy, Archie's son. So it's kind of ironic there. Um, in 84, the Oilers signed Canadian Football League uh, star Warren Moon, who was a Hall of Famer, and I used to love watching him play when I was you know, a kid because he was another gunslinger. Luck played as Moon's backup for the majority of the season. He completed 22 with 36 pass attempts for 256, two of which were touchdown passes with one pick. Luck also had some success around the ball, carrying 10 times, 75 yard touchdown. In 85 and 86, Luck continued to play back up the moon. He threw 100 passes in 85, completing 56 of them for two touchdowns, two picks. In 1986, Luck's final season in the NFL, he completed 31 and 60 passes, 341, a touchdown, and five interceptions. That was it for the NFL. It wasn't so much that he was horrible, it was just timing. I mean, of course, one moon was going to, one moon was going to take a spot. I mean, that's a future Hall of Famer. He was starring Canada at the end. Of course, he's going to take the spot. I mean, hell, he could. One moon could take almost anybody's spot back in the eighties. After retiring from pro football, Luck received a, J, uh, a JD from University of Texas School of Law. He graduated with honors. He again, he is probably one of the smartest people. Even Mr. Man said he's the best football mind that he knows. In nineteen ninety one, he became a general manager of the Frankfurt Galaxy, of the fledging World League of American Football, which turned out to be in for Europe. He held the post for two years until the league was suspended. Upon its resumption in 95, he became general manager of the Rain Fire and was named league president the following year. Luck held that role until 2000, in which he oversaw the league's rebranding as NFL Europe, intended to strengthen the connection between the league and its parents, the NFL. Tons one, Luck was sworn in as CEO of the Houston Sports Authority. In this role, he oversaw the operations of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. The government entity created in 1997 to provide the finance and construction management of the three large sports and entertainment venues in Houston, Minute Maid Park, Alliance Stadium, and the new downtown Mopi Purpose Arena, home of the Rockets and Comets. He was responsible for getting the Texans to Houston. Now, don't overlook the fact that Houston got an XFL team. He probably had a lot to do with that. Um, you know, he probably had a lot to do with bringing, bringing the XFL to Houston. And I think it's a good spot for him. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he's been there. He knows the city. Um, he knows how football hungry they are. He knows how football. Not only was he the president of the Houston, you know, commission, he was also played in Houston, so he's he's familiar there. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see Andrew. Uh, I'm sorry, Oliver Luck at a lot of Houston XFL games come 2020 next year. Um, you know, that, that's pretty much his second home, and I th- I think it'd be a good spot. I think he did good picking Houston as an XFL city because it is a football hungry town. So is Dallas. I mean, Texas in general. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, when he, I'm sure he had some input on picking the city. So let's put it that way. 
Prior to joining the Sports Authority, however, Luck was a top-ranking executive with the National Football League for more than 10 years, where he served as Vice President of Business Development and President of CEO of NFL Europe until in five years named President of the Houston Dynamo Major League Soccer. Other Major League Soccer, Luck worked as a city and county to create publicly funded downtown soccer stadium, BBVA Compass Stadium, which opened the much fanfare in 2012. That stadium was actually being looked at for the XFL. I'm kind of surprised, knowing that he helped do that, that it wasn't picked. But obviously, they might have wanted just – you know, they only got two soccer stadiums for XFL. Maybe they just didn't want three, and that's why they went to the University of Houston uh, Stadium. Uh, on June 27, 2008, Luck was appointed by the West Virginia Governor Joe Manchin to the West Virginia University Board of Governors. On June 9, 2010, Luck was hired as athletic director. Two years later, his name served as a principal candidate to fill um, the athletic director slot at Stanford University, where his son, Andrew Luck, played quarterback. One of his daughters played volleyball, but Luck announced that he was going to be staying with West Virginia. Back to Stanford, <clears throat> talking about how, you know, Houston got an XFL stadium after he was there for playing football in, and, um, I'm sorry, they were playing football and been on the, um, the committee there, the sports authority. And now I'm talking about Stanford and how Angel Luck played there. Pep Hamilton is rumored to be a coach for the DC team. And that's not a that's not a shock considering that his son Andrew played under Pep at Stanford and at Indy. He knows he, he knows football people. He knows who he can get. He knows people on the inside. This is why we got people like Bob Stoops, Pam Hamilton, and and people like that. So that and, and so it's not a shock that people he knows and cities that he's familiar with is in the XFL. I mean, just it's no shock. During Luck's time at West Virginia, the athletic program made significant changes, including West Virginia's move from the Big East to the Big Twelve, which meant more money, um, the resignation of head football coach Bill Stewart, and subsequent promotion of Dana Holgerson to that spot, and the firing of baseball coach Greg Van Zant. Instituted beer sales at football games, which means more money. Restructured the WVU's compliance office and took the school off major probation. He did it all at West Virginia. He was a cult hero up there. Felicitated multimedia rights to IMG, a 12-year, $86 million guaranteed deal. Added men's golf after a 32-year hiatus. Hired baseball coach Randy Mazie, who led the team to third place in the Big 12. And organized state TIF funding to build a new baseball stadium, eventually known as Mongolia uh, County Park, or Mongolia. On October 12, 2002, um, or 2012, I'm sorry, West Virginia amended Luck's employment agreement, extending his contract to 2017. On 2000, uh, October 2013, Luck was one of the 13 members unanimously chosen by the College Football Playoff Management Committee to select four teams to compete in the first college football playoff. On December 17, 2014, the NCAA announced that Luck would take a newly created post as Executive Vice President for Regulatory Affairs. Luck is in charge. Luck was in charge of all national office regulatory functions, including academics, membership, eligibility, and enforcement. The position had been created by current NCAA President Mark Emmert as part of a major restructuring of his senior staff. Notably, the NCAA offices are in Indianapolis, where his son Andrew currently plays. That that took a big you know, that was a big part of it, him getting to be closer to Andrew and watching him play and all that good stuff. Not only is he a football guy, he loves his son, he, he you know, he's a family man. And he he just he's got the perfect characteristics of somebody you want to be in charge. And then finally on June fifth, two thousand eighteen, the XFL announced that Luck would be the league's commissioner and CEO. He's built stuff up from the ground up. You know, he's built leagues before. He's helped get soccer. He's helped cities get football teams. He's helped the college football program turn it around and become, I don't want to say a major player, but a, a player in the Big 12. Um, he He's bred, you know, a son that could be MVP in the future, Super Bowl champion, um, now that his shoulder is healed up and stuff. Oliver is the kind of person that you want to be the face of the company, like I said. We love hearing him talk. He he knows what he's doing, and he's the exact reason why the XFL is going to succeed this time. He's going to make sure it succeeds. Mr. McMahon knows what he's doing this time. He learned from his mistakes and said, no, I'm going to take a back seat. I want somebody to help me. And he reached out to Oliver, and Oliver 
did it with open arms, and he's hit the ground running. I think he will be the reason why this succeeds. He's going to get the right coaches, the right players. He's going to get people that want to be there and want to make this successful. People that's not just there for a paycheck, which someone will be, but people that want to play, people that want to try something new, people that want to be a part of this experiment. He keeps saying about the quality of the play. He's going to make sure we get the quality of play that we deserve as fans, and that's one the NFL can say. My commissioner is better than NFL commissioner, and I believe that. Um, Oliver Luck is going to be the reason why the XFL is the future of football, and he's going to make sure that it succeeds or die trying. You know, everywhere he's went, he's been successful, and he's built up a program. He's built up a league. He's built up a team. And that's why he's finding coaches. Not only is he going to be coaches, but GMs. So not only is he going to, not only is he going to build a league up himself, he's going to bring in people like Bob Stoops to help him build it up as well. He's not doing it in law anymore, uh, but he is the face of the, of, of the league. We as fans should appreciate him for knowing what we want, listening to us, you know, and, and keeping us up to date. You know, every week he's like, hey, you know, we're getting close to TV deals. Hey, we're getting close to coaches, which, you know, he don't give us a time frame, but he don't just leave us out in the dark either. Super Bowl week. You know how many interviews that man gave during Super Bowl week? You know how many people, you know how many interviews he gave after um, after the city announcements and stuff? Like, he probably stood there for a good hour talking to everybody. He's very friendly. He's very engaging. He's got charisma. And he's going to make sure that you know that this is the future of football. Everywhere he goes, and, 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 and everywhere he goes, he gives just, not only does he give good stuff about the XFL, every time he's asked about the AAF, he don't ever down them. You know, he don't down the NFL. He don't down college football. He don't down AAF. He says, you know what? We're not trying to compete with any of those. You know, we're our own league. There's room for both of us. We're not trying to compete with the XFL. We're going to be a complimentary to that. Uh, I'm sorry, the NFL. We're going to be a complimentary to the NFL. Like, he's that kind of person. Like, he's – Vincent Mann in the original league, he stepped on too many toes. He's like, NFL means no fun league and stuff. And they pretty much blackballed XFL from the beginning trying to compete or, you know, trying to make – trying to alienate the fans of the NFL. This time, though, Oliver's not doing that. He's like, you know what? We we want to have a relationship with the NFL. We want to be a compliment to them. We we don't mind the AAF, you know. we're gonna. I'm sure he's thinking we're going to kick their ass. We're going to be the better league. But he's not going to come out and say that because he don't want to alienate the fans. Why not watch both? Why don't I be like the Monday Night Wars? I'm, I mean, I'm watching AAF right now on DVR just because I love football. Well, come 2020, best damn believe I'm going to watch XFL. Why not watch both? Why not be like the Monday Night War? You know, like, oh, I'm a, a, a WCW fan. Oh, I'm a WF fan. Oh, I'm AAF. I'm XFL. Why not? You know, this might be a, a time where spring football is a, is a good thing. And all of us even said that. The talent pool's deep for the XFL. They're going to find the best players. They're working with Optim Scouting. They're going to find good quarterbacks because that's what he does. He finds good people. He's found the Jim Hazlitt's. He's found um, the Bob Stoops. He's found the Pep Hamilton's because he knows them. He's worked with these people before. He knows Pep Hamilton. He knows Bob Stoops from college football. He knows Jim Hazlitt. He's going to find people that want to be there and want to do the job that they're supposed to do. No ifs, ands, and buts. Um, let me know what you think about Oliver Luck. You know, tell me what you think about him. Tell me if you think he is the reason why the XFL is going to succeed. Because uh, I, I do believe so. I think that's the best hire Vince has ever done. WWF, WWE, XFL 1, XFL 2. Thank you uh, for voting this topic. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to talk about next. I'm hoping some coaching news come out. Maybe Pip Hamilton and Tim Hazlitt see where they're going. And I'll talk about that. Talk about them and what I think. Uh, subscribe to the show. Um, go post on the XFL board on XFLboard.com. Uh, go to NFL2K.com's YouTube to watch the video version of this or, you know, listen to me on any podcast platform. Check out XFL2K.com for all the latest news and stuff. Follow me at Twitter at XFL Podcast and on Facebook at XFL Podcast. Thank you so much and have a good night.